What's going on YouTube? This is Dreader Plug coming at you guys with some more technical heat. Definitely hit that subscribe button and that bell button so you guys can stay notified and stay up to date for when I drop technical heat. And in this video specifically, I'm going to actually go over resumes. Let's get into it. I mean, I didn't had an interview with just about majority of all of the big companies, I'll say. So I know a little, little, little something. So you hear it all the time, man. You always hear, man, it only take about 15 seconds for a recruiter to really go through any resume and see whether or not he's going to proceed with actually looking through the whole entire thing. And that's extremely, extremely factual. Like coming from somebody, I won't necessarily say the company name. I won't even put the person out there. But I was actually in a position to where I actually got to interact with somebody who go over the resumes and actually go over the whole process. And this is like somebody who was at like a top 10 Fortune 500 company. And he really was giving me the whole spill on pretty much how to go about submitting your resumes and how he just ended up just tossing them to the recycle bin instantly. And just some things that he just did not like. So basically just the first rule of thumb is just like, look at how your resume look. If it looks so busy and confusing, like how this one looks like, it literally looks like it's probably telling an entire story, literally. But then this one, as you can, you can just literally just look at it and just see how nice it is visually, man. Like it looks like you could really knock out this two times faster than this one, man. Look like you're gonna be here for a while trying to really understand what's going on. Right here, it looks so organized just from a distance, from a distance. That's something you really, really, really need to look at. Just go in and look at your own resume and say, do this look like something that somebody will even want to read? Is it something that you will want to read right now? You know what I'm saying? Okay, so another rule of thumb, you want to kind of avoid having paragraphs. Like something that I'll actually say is have like two or three lines pretty much explaining whatever you ended up creating or doing in your experience. I wouldn't wanna have nine or eight sentences to where an actual recruiter have to go through and read that entire thing and you never know, they may not even be looking for that particular thing and that just took up so much of your resume page. So it's best to kinda of have like a good two or three sentences just stating pretty much what your project was over and they should look at it and say, man, I wanna know more about it and that's when they ask you about it. Instead of having to read a whole paragraph about something that you probably went over probably did probably did an amazing job but it's like man what if that whole section on your resume was not valuable for what the company actually want so another thing try to avoid using periods i know some resumes some engineering some tech resumes they actually have periods but there's a lot of recruiters that will look at your resume and say well, what's the point of you having periods for some reason so that's just another kind of rule of thumb i mean if you want to use some that's cool but I would definitely try to make sure not to have it looking like an essay, man. Just try to avoid the whole essay look. Make it seem extremely, extremely easy to read. So other rules of thumb when it actually comes down to having a nice resume. So other things he was kind of breaking down to me of things that he did not like or key things that most recruiters do not like when it comes down to resumes. One was the fact that if he seen one spell error, like that was it. It was instantly going into the trash can, instantly going into the recycle bin straight like that, just over one particular spell error. Another thing was the fact that if he was to find the fact that it's a, like a hobby section or is at there, like the resume is talking about hobbies for some reason. So try to avoid hobbies, try to avoid spelling errors man like come on it's 2020 we have so many websites that pretty much clear up spelling errors so definitely make sure you avoid those two things so another thing is to use keywords when you're actually trying to get a job position i mean if you're going for apple you're going to want to use specific words like ios and stuff like that you know what i mean like you want to it's kind of like a date you want to be on the same page with the recruiter that's reading your resume that's why i know a lot of people like back when i was in my undergrad which was like last year um they'll have multiple resumes and for certain type of companies it'll kind of be tailored to that specific company. I actually did that a couple of times for some companies. I'll definitely kind of tailor it more so to having keywords that a recruiter will actually look at and be more attracted to versus just having a broad engineering type of resume. So that's something that will definitely help you out and give you a leg up over your counterparts. 
So now you're probably asking yourself like, so what keywords or where can I go about actually finding keywords that a recruiter might like, right? So something that I would do, right? If I'm going into a job position tomorrow, I'm about to go talk to this Intel recruiter, right? One thing that I would do, I will look on LinkedIn and just type in the job position and I will go through everybody and see everything that they work on and I'll kind of tailor work that I've done that's similar to what they do as far as their particular project and all kind of go back and forth on that particular subject and kind of match some of the keywords that I've done. You know, if you use, you worked on a certain type of process or even use the processor for anything, I would kind of relate that to it so it could match up. It'll make, it makes a lot more sense when you actually go looking at what other people in the same position than already did and kind of tailoring it towards your resume. So that way, when you guys see each other, you guys have a conversation about your resume, it's no longer like, oh, um, talking to the recruiter and saying, what do you do? It's more so, oh, I already do stuff that's related to what you guys will have me doing if I was to get hired on. All right, so jumping into the last tip when it comes down to having the perfect resume or even uploading it online. So something that I feel like this is the biggest tip for when it comes down to submitting resumes online, right? So you have to have a cover letter. Like so many people, they have this beautiful resume, everything matches up, everything checks out, but they don't upload a cover letter. And recruiters, they'll look at that and they'll say, why would I hire this person? This person couldn't even take the time out of their day to upload a cover letter with their resume. And that was another thing that he mentioned to me. He was like, why would you not put a cover letter? Why would you leave anything blank? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And definitely the person who actually used a cover letter or put forth a cover letter uh, with their resume, they clearly have another leg up. So once you then already completed all of these tasks, which I mentioned beforehand with the resume, and then add a cover letter onto it, that's just the icing on the cake. And that concludes this video. Don't forget to comment like and subscribe it really do help my channel when it comes down to the youtube algorithm if you guys have any questions regarding anything just hit me up on instagram hit me up on the gram at dre the plug one two three and then also go check out my other youtube channel this is actually my second channel my first one was called andre classic cuts i basically go in and give tutorials about all types of different haircuts I actually show people how to do different type of things with the clippers that has never been done. And I pretty much go into detail as to why certain things happen. So definitely go check out that channel. Besides that, be on the lookout for my next content that's dropping. Be on the lookout for it because it's coming real soon. And I'm out.